Hello everyone and welcome to Merlin's Manor. Today I'm going to be showing you how to play World Wonders with the solo mode and you're going to be playing basically the same way you would play the multiplayer game for yourself and you're going to have the setup for a two-player game and you are going to have this automaton deck which is going to determine what the automaton is going to take away from the options as well as sometimes it will claim monuments which if you're playing in hard mode it will score those rings on those monuments but if you're playing in easy mode all it's going to score is going to be how far you get up on all these tracks here and of course uh, score that also for the hard mode as well as the monuments for hard mode. So that's all the automaton is going to do is basically get things out of the way. It's not going to have its own player board. It's not going to be scoring its own points really other than basically on what you have done. So it's very simple to run. And so let's go ahead and just jump in right now and talk about the setup and how we will take our turns and then I'll go over how the automaton deck works. And so you're going to set up with this board here with all these different tiles. There's going to be 10 of each type and you're going to stack them all up and then reveal the first one. Uh, and each, each round you're going to get a new set of those coming out and the ones that are here are going to go away. You are going to set up the monument deck and you're going to put out two different monument cards. In a multiplayer game you'd put three out each round and then as one is taken you would flip a new one over here. You're only doing two but still one will come out when one goes away. And then you are going to take one road for yourself as well as this setup here where you're going to put the gold coin there. You're going to put the the population marker, the leaf there, the vase there, and the wheel, the, the gear there. Basically, they show you all what they're going to be. And those will go up as you take these things. Now, I'll go over that in just a moment. You're also going to put out one long road and a set of small roads, which is a two by one, another two by one, and a one by one. And then you're going to set up set out a tower right there and those will be set up like that each round any that are taken you will refill each round then you also put your player board here and like I said you've got a road that you'll start out with and you'll put that somewhere on your board that makes sense for where you want to start out and you can set up your player board either on the river side and all these different player boards actually have a slightly different setup or you can turn it over and play on the lake side and then you've got this player aid here that will help you know what you need to do throughout the game. And that is the basic setup. Let's go over what you can do on your turn. And so let's take a look at this real quick. You've got that you can buy a road, either a large road or a set of small roads for one coin. Uh, you will not be getting the first and second player markers, so you can ignore that for the solo game. You can play two coin, pay two coins to get a tower, which will enable you to be able to build out your roads and places where you otherwise wouldn't be able to. And I'll go over that when we talk about adjacency placement in a moment. Or you can pay the amount of coins listed here to be able to get one of these face-up tiles that corresponds to that amount that you'll pay. Or you can spend the last of your money for the round, all the rest of it, to claim one of these monuments if you meet the requirements for placement here. And I'll go over those as we kind of go through and see how the different ones look there. If we look on the other side of this player aid, it will show us uh, what we can place adjacent to other things. And so roads can go adjacent to roads. Roads can go adjacent to this bottom border here. Roads can go adjacent to towers. And so if you have built yourself in such a way that you cannot uh, place out a road somewhere on the board, you can place a tower next to anything that you've already built. And then you can restart building out roads from there. And also... Buildings can go next to roads, and buildings can go next to the same colored building. And so you can kind of build out those same colored buildings, but you cannot build a brown next to a purple unless you've got a road that is being connected to in that way. And when you go ahead and build out these buildings, you will get what it says on here, which is basically going up on this track. Whenever you hit one of these population symbols, you'll go up on the population track. So if I'd gone up there, that would also trigger that going up one. You'll be spending gold from here to be able to buy things. And you can also on your turn take out a loan, which is a free action. You won't have to flip a card for the Otama in between doing this. And basically you'll get two extra gold that you can spend on your turn. And then later on you'll have to pay back three gold or you'll lose two victory points. And you can only ever have one loan at a time during the game. The end game is triggered in one of two ways. Either you go 10 full rounds and so as you enter that last round, 
you'll be out of pieces here on the board and you'll know you're going into that final round or whenever you get all the way up on the population track that will also trigger the end game and you'll finish out that entire round spending all of your gold for that round and that will be the end of the game. And so that is the basics of the game plan. I'm going to briefly go over how you're going to be scoring points at the end of the game. You're going to be scoring points for all of these that you have reached, these natural resource spaces, but have not covered over. If you cover over, you do not score points for it. You also score points for all of your buildings that are completely surrounded by either a border, a natural resource, a river space, or something that you have placed on the board. And so if it's completely surrounded, you'll score a point for that building. You'll score points for your monuments based on the amount of rings that it has on it. You'll score points for any rings that you have gotten to or passed on this population track here. And you'll score points for your lowest on these. So let's say we had a situation like this. You would score seven points because that was your lowest one. Keep in mind, Otama is gonna score for all of these. And so if you have these extremely like this where they're not close to one another, you're going to score a small amount of points, and Otama's going to score all of these points, so 12 plus 10 plus 7, if that's how the game ended. So you want to be careful about making sure you are increasing on all these tracks at least somewhat equally there. And of course, you'll lose points if you have any unpaid loans at the end of the game. And as I mentioned before, Otama's going to score for all these tracks, plus you're playing on hard mode, the rings on the monuments, and that's all Otama's going to be doing as far as the scoring goes. So let's go ahead and get into the game and show you how these Otama cards are going to work. All you're going to do, Otama's going to take the first turn of every round, and then it's going to look at this card, and it's going to do the first one if it's able to, and if it is able to complete that, then it will stop. That's all it's going to do. If it can't take that, then it would go down to this next one. If that one's not available either, it would come down to here. And here, if it made it down here, it's going to take the left monument, if it had an arrow pointing to the right, it would take the right monument. And it doesn't have to worry about any kind of restrictions there, it just takes it. And now sometimes you'll see something that has a plus sign. Let's take a look at this next card here. Uh, it's got this plus this. If this card were to come up, then it, if it can f fulfill either of these, that is enough to fulfill that. And so it'll, it'll take both if both are available. If only one is available, it will take one of them and then it will stop. And that's of course the second option, it would first do the roads there. And there's also a reshuffle card in here that when that comes up, we will reshuffle the deck. And so that's all the basics of what we need to know to get in and start playing the game. And so Otama's gonna take its first turn after we place our first road here. And I think I'm going to place a road right about here. That feels like a good place for my road. And one thing I, I, I to mention, if you were to take this this uh, long road, you can also turn it over and it becomes a bridge to go over water like that. As long as you have one side, as, uh, both si ends are on the green, you can do that. So you have to have one side here and one side here, you're fine. You cannot end it like this. That would not be legal because you're on the water there. So let's go ahead and jump in and start playing the game. I put my road down. Otama is going to be taking this one here and just getting it out of the way. And now we have to decide what we're going to do. And I've noticed that the nothing that we need other than, of course, these have come out. But there's no blue out there. So I'm not going to be able to claim any of these on my first turn, which is not ideal. But let's go ahead and start working towards maybe be able to get one of them the next turn. So let's go start work towards the ziggurat. And I'm going to go ahead and take this one here. It's going to cost me five coins. And then I'm going to get two of the vase and two of the gears and place this, this. Let's place it right there. And then the Otama is going to take its next turn. It's going to clear out the small roads. And that's all it's going to do. And now we take our turn. And I think I'm going to get the other one of these while the getting's good. No, I can't afford that. Because uh, unless I take a loan, I don't know when I take a loan for that. I can spend up to two. They all take three. Or I can get a loan and spend four. No, yeah, four. Yeah, let's go ahead. Or I can get road. a road. No, it's still not. No, let's go ahead and get the loan. So I'm going to get the loan. And then I'm going to spend four. One, two, three, four. 
to get this. And I'm going to place it right there. Get one of those, which means the population is going to move up. And then two of those. And the population moved up because the gear covered up that population symbol. So I've spent all my money, including that from my loan. And so the Otama doesn't do anything now because the round is over because I spent the last of my money. And so what we're going to do here is these are going to come back in for the next round. These are going to go away. And these are going to refill. And this is going to get back to zero. So now we are going to flip for the Otama's turn, always first. And it's going to take all these small roads again. And then we do have a blue out there. So let's work towards getting that so that we can play something next to... Oh, I've messed that up, haven't I? I need to be able to place it next to a road, a blue, and a that. So we're going to spend one to get another road. So that hopefully we can set this up in a way that makes sense here. Ooh, there's not a good way to do this, I don't think. Well, if you put the blue... Ah, that will work, because I can put the blue here, and the ziggurat can go here, as long as it doesn't steal this. Don't steal it, don't steal it. It didn't. Yes. And so it's going to take this one. That is fine. And then we are going to spend three gold, one, two, three, to grab this and put it here. Going up twice on the gears. We're getting lots of gears. We need to focus on some of the other things a little bit more. That's the balance that's going to come throughout the game. And so now it's going to flip again. And it's going to take the tower plus this. And so we're just going to move the, remove a tower from this round. And that's going to go there. And then I can't pay back my loan and claim this, unfortunately, because I don't have enough. I have to have at least one gold to spend to do that. Now the question is, do I want to buy one of the tiles? No, I can't even buy a tile out here and claim. So I'm just going to claim the ziggurat. And so it is going to come right here. If we look at this card, we are fulfilling it being adjacent to a road, adjacent to a blue building, and adjacent to a purple building. Road, blue, purple. And it fills in nicely right there. I'm going to have a point at the end of the game for that. And I go up one on the population right now. And that's the end of the round because I spent the last of my monies. This is going to come out. And then these are all going to go away. Now we have the Hippodrome, which is going to ha have that size there. And it's going to be next to a road and a forest space. And remember, we still have the Great Wall of China, which needs to be next to a resource, a road, and an H building. So the first thing it's going to do, oh, and all these come back out for this round. One, two, and one. One of those, and a tower. And that's going that way, and they're going to take that out of the way for us. Now what are we going to, oh, that would have filled in perfectly right there, too. Oh, there are no good places to put the Hippodrome. Maybe we start focusing on this one here. Yeah, that's what we're going to work towards. So I'm going to get this. It's going to cost me, oh, we set the gold. Cost me one, two, three gold. And I'm going to try and get it over here where I can get the Great Wall. And when you have something like this that has a bunch of different requirements in different pieces, you can re make those requirements simply by having any of the pieces adding up to all those requirements. So you get one piece, fulfill all three. You get each of the pieces to fulfill one, one doing two, and the other doing one. However, you need to do in order to make sure all those requirements are fulfilled by the totality of the three pieces. And so, if I put this, and of course, they, these all have to be adjacent to one another, but that's basically all they have to be to one another. They, you don't have to have them spread out in a way that makes sense. They can overlap upon one another. Uh, the book actually uses the Great Wall of China as an example, and it does a very weird example to show you can basically do anything as long as they are adjacent to one another and fulfilling those three requirements. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. So we do that. And we're going up there and there. Give me two population. Oh, wait, it won't come down to the road if I do that. This is trickier than I thought it was going to be. 
Put the wall there, there. I'm just gonna do it like that, even though I'm gonna have to build another road at some point. But I'm gonna put the wall here, here, and then come across this way. Okay, so the Atama's turn, it's going to take this, and then I'm gonna pay back my loan, one, two, three, and spend the last one to claim the Great Wall of China. And so it's going to go there, there, and there. And I preserve this natural resource here. We're touching this one and it's showing there. And so we have gathered a few different points there. One for the Great Wall. Now that one we had already gathered and we preserved that one. And then we got an extra point for reaching out to that one at the end of the game as long as we don't cover it up. And so we go up one on the population track because it says so on there. And so that is the end of the round again. These go away. Reset the gold. And going into the new round with a new monument as well. And so this one needs to be next to water and a purple building. So let's see what the Otama is going to do for its first action. It's going to take this building here. I think I'm going to build this. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Oh, nope. That's going over water. Never mind. I thought it would fit in there. It won't. This is the piece that would fit in there. and It's not the right piece. I might need to build a road somewhere out just so I can start placing things somewhere else. Yeah, I'm just going to see how things fit. That, that won't fit in there at all. I've kind of made this part hard to do stuff other than a four point. Put a tower here. I could put a bridge right here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend two on getting a tower. Then we flip. It's going to take this out of the way. And then I'm going to spend one on a bridge road like that. And then it's going to take that out of the way. And one, two, three, five. I have four to spend. Oh, I paid back that loan last round. Four to spend. I'm going to spend two on this. Set it up so I can get this. Let's put that there. I get one on that track. It is going to take this out of the way. And do I spend one on roads hoping that that's still there? Don't think I do. I think I just go straight for it. I'm going to claim the Hippodrome which we will put here. That makes the road requirement and that is the green requirement. It'll be worth one point at the end of the game. Reset everything. Machu Picchu, if I can get another green out there. Okay, we still haven't gotten a reshuffle. Okay, it's gonna take all the roads this round. That's kind of greedy. Okay, let's go ahead and buy this one for three. We're going to place it right in here. One there, that's going to go up one, and one there. Now it gets to reshuffle. That's what the reshuffle looks like. Okay, what's it going to do? It's going to take this piece. Let's take this one for two. Put one on there. And how do I want to do this? I think just like that. Really? The reshuffle came up. Okay, can't take roads because they're already gone. It can do this. There's two different things, but as long as it can do one of the two, it will be fine. It would take both if both were there. And now I'm going to spend the last of my money to get this one for now. Because I may find a better way of doing things for this. So it's going to go right here. It meets the requirement of being adjacent to water and adjacent to a purple building. Resetting everything. Going into the new round, the Otama is going to start out by getting rid of that. And we got the Giza Pyramid Complex come out. That needs to be next to two purples. And it's worth two points if we can pull it off, but right now we cannot. And there's just no space down here because there's river right here. So the most I can get out right now is one thing towards it. Is there something I can do better for the green right now? Not really. I think I'm just going to have to put Machi Picchu right here and cover up this natural resource. Ooh, I've also 
block this road in here. So I'm going to put another tower out at some point probably. Or I can build off from down here. I actually didn't think about that earlier. I could have done that earlier down here. This green is way too big to go in here without covering up natural resources. No, it's not actually. Because it doesn't work towards any of these. But I might be okay with that because it's going to connect to two of these things. So one, two, three, four, five. Putting that down in here. I just gained two natural resources. Going one, two there, one there, one, two there. And it's going to take this. And I'm going to spend, oh wait, actually I might go ahead and do a road right now. I'm going to spend one to put out roads. So I think I'm just going to start a road down here. Let's start a road right there. And it can't take that. It can take the second one, though. And then we're going to spend our last money to get Machu Picchu. It's going to cover up a natural resource, but it does get us two points. So we spent a point to get two points. That seems worth it. Plus, we made this to where it's fully covered in, this to where it's fully covered in. This is almost fully covered. And so there are a lot of things that went well with that piece going there, even though it covered up a natural resource. Reset everything. You want these come out? It's the Colosseum. First thing the Otama is going to do is take all the roads. I forgot to put that road out. And it goes away just as quickly as I remember to put it out. So whatever I'm doing is based off of the roads I already have in place, which doesn't seem too terrible anyway. We need to work towards the Colosseum, maybe. We've got multiple things we can do for those. There's only one of these out right now. It needs to be next to a road, so we can't block the road completely in. Trying to visualize here what things could go where. Coliseum is, it would go right here. And so if we built there, let's go ahead and grab this and put it here. One, two, and it's going to cost me three gold. And it's going to take this piece. Actually, the only one I can afford to take right now is this one. So one, two, go up one on there. Fill that in there. It's gonna reshuffle. All the roads are gone, so it can't take roads. It's gonna go to this next one. That goes away. And then we'll spend the rest of our money to get the Coliseum, which is gonna go right here. It is adjacent to an H building, an M building, and a road. And now we've connected to this natural resource there. So that basically just got us two points, plus this is gonna go up one. One point for the Coliseum and one point for that. Now we need to work on filling this area in and this area in to score those buildings maybe. Uh, also this one needs a little bit here and here, which is a little awkward. And <laughs> this one needs something right in there, which is very awkward. The only thing that can go in there is a tower. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what we wind up doing there. Can't score every building, probably. The new one that's coming out is the Aqueduct. It has to start and end on a green space and then go over any amount of water and green spaces. It needs to be adjacent to a water, a road, and a forest. This would be ideal if I could get a road up in here. The only way to get a road up there would be to put a tower in. Anyway, its first thing is to take that. I think I have to spend two to put a road somewhere up here. Actually, no, it has to be adjacent to some water at some point. Can't build it over here. Let's buy roads. I mean, buy tower. So it's going to go here. Let's hope it doesn't steal our roads. It's going to reshuffle, so we have a little suspense. Okay, let's see what it gets. Sold a big road. That's fine. That's fine. We're going to pin one on getting all these little roads. And I'm going to put one here, one there. And I'm going to put this one down here because it will complete this. Those were built out because of this tower. That was built out because it's next to the border still. Now let's see what it grabs. It's going to grab this thing. I got lots of money still. One, two, three. Well, three that I can spend. Uh, what am I trying to do? The aqueduct is going to go way out there. Keep that in mind. I don't want to cover up 
not a lot of places I can build in the moment that won't get rid of points. So as silly as this seems, I might just spend all this money for money on getting the aqueduct. Because I don't see anything else that's beneficial for me, and I don't want to give the automaton points randomly that's not going to help me. Which feels like the only place I could put stuff is going to help it more than me. If I could put the purple down in here is all I could really do right now. Go up on each of those. But there's, that'd be an awkward place to fill in to actually score points for it or this thing. So yeah, I'm just going to spend all my money on getting the aqueduct. I'm going to go up one on the leaf. I'm going to place the aqueduct right here. It is adjacent to green, and it is adjacent to the river, and it is adjacent to a road. Okay, let's see. We got this one came out. It needs to be next to purple and a road, and it's very awkwardly shaped. Right now, I don't have the purple out, and no purple came out. Oh, I'm not going to be able to claim either of those this round. Okay, it's going to take all the small roads. And now I just got to figure out what's beneficial for this round. I need purple to come out to fill anything in there. Build all these roads up here, but now they're kind of awkward. Oh, I forgot to put out a tower. Put a tower in here just to be able to make sure that scores. Now let's do this. Spend three of that. Get one, two, and that goes up one. It's going to take this one. Didn't have a place to put that anyway. I could put something down here, but it would be awkward to fill it in. Ooh, that's a nice little three shape, but oh, and that's a road. Um, yeah, let's do that one. So spending two gold, went up on the gear. Now that scored me a point. I uh, probably should have done that first. Oh, it didn't matter. I'll spend two just on getting this thing. And we're going to place it in here just to be able to score that. Reset everything. This is the last round. It's going to take that to start out with. And now we got still the awkwardness of I probably am not going to score either of these. I just need to try and cover up as much as I can or extend out stuff too. I think I do this. Extending out from this H building here, it's going to cost me one, two, three. And I'm going to get a gear, as that goes up one there, and get a leaf. And now we see what it takes from us. It takes that, which is fine, because I think I want this. It fills in this area, which is going to link us to this natural resource. And it's going to get us more of these pottery, which we need. It's going to cost us. One, two, three, four. Yep, everything we have. Go up one there, go up one on the population, go up one, two there, go up on the population again. Nice. That was as good of a final turn as we were going to get. Okay, so there is our board. Let's see how we did. And we're going to go ahead and flip this over to do our final scoring. And let's just go ahead and get the Atomas score out there for easy and see what that's going to be. It's going to have 12... Plus 10 is 22, plus another 9 is 31. So that is a pretty basic score. Actually, it didn't get any monuments, so that's also its hard score. It kept it from getting monuments by taking quick turns. So let's see how we did now. And so we start out with population. We had all three rings for our population, so we we're going to start out with three points there. Least produced resource is this one, so we get nine points. So going up to 12. And then Monuments, we earn one victory point for each ring on our Monument cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to go from 12 to 20. And then Natural Resources. How many Natural Resources are showing that are connected to something we've built? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're going up from 20 to 29. And then how many city districts we have, which is basically buildings that are completely surrounded by water. 
something we built or a natural resource or the border. And so let's come up here. This one is completely surrounded. So that's one, no, two, no, three, no, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we get ten points there going from 29 to 39. We didn't have any loans that we failed to pay back, so we don't lose any points for that. And that is the final score, 39 to 31. I felt kind of awkward those last few rounds not being able to do a monument, but I did enough other good stuff and limited it to 31 points. That's the lowest I've seen it score. Let me make sure I did that right. 31, yeah. So there you have it. That is how you play World Wonders with the solo mode. A very simple Otama to run. And I built out a nice little city here. Uh, and I always enjoy looking at what I was able to build out. All these different monuments that are built. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. I enjoy the polyomino placement as well where you're trying to surround those buildings. There's several different things that you are trying to do to score points. And while it may seem a little awkward that whatever you are doing on these tracks is going to score the Otama points, which kind of gives you this push or pull how much you want to put out tile-wise as you don't want to give it too many points that you aren't going to be able to make up. But then you can make up those points by surrounding your buildings, by reaching out to those natural resources, and of course, the biggest thing is making sure you get as many of those monuments in that you can, both for the fact that they give you some coverage around your buildings, as well as they are going to score you those rings, which is probably the biggest thing that makes up for the fact that you're scoring points for the automaton uh, whenever you are putting those tiles out. Uh, those, those automatons are going to score one to four points, depending on how big those tiles are that you put out. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's taught you how to play this game. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'll answer you in the comments below. Anyway, I uh, hope you have a great week, and game on.